I hear a lot of people say, you know, oh, I don't read much, or they say, oh, yeah, I read, but I only really read non-fiction, you know, biographies and things like that. And I'm like, well, you know, why, why do you only read non-fiction? What's wrong with fiction? Why don't you like reading fiction? And some of those people, or at least, you know, a couple of those people have answered me saying, um, well, I don't see the point in, in reading stuff that's made up because, you know, it's not real, is it? Um, I'd rather read about real people and real lives. Is there truth in fiction? I would argue, yes. Is there as much truth in fiction as there is in non-fiction? I would argue, yes, if not more. Non-fiction, as it's called, is always written by somebody. And as any historian will know, whenever you read an account of something, say an account of, a, of something that's happened in history, you have to keep in mind who wrote it first of all, why were they writing it, who, they, who were they writing it for, and are they actually giving any evidence, and is what they're writing something that can be given hard evidence for. When you read a biography of, I don't know, a famous person who is a real person, the biography would be very dull if all it said was so and such, such and such a person was born in such and such a hospital in such and such a year, cared for by his parents, blah de blah and blah de blah, went to such and such a school, gained such and such qualifications, began work in such and such a year, etc, etc. That would be dull, really, wouldn't it? Who would, no one wants to read that. When you read a biography, when you read a lot of historical accounts, when you read a lot of what people call non-fiction, the language used and the way it's padded out is actually extremely subjective and you really do have to think about who wrote it, why were they writing it, who were they writing it for. Well, even when you're giving facts in biographies, people choose their words carefully. If they don't choose their words carefully, they're not really a skilled writer because a writer, a skilled writer, every word they choose is chosen for a purpose, to get a point across, to set a mood, to give an impression. So they don't carelessly use words because it's like the only word they know. No, they pick and they choose them to shape the impression that they want to give, even if they are writing about so-called real events. I mean, if you read... Did I do that? I'm so crap. If you read um, newspapers, they might have a handful of facts in them, but the story around it sometimes is so completely obviously biased and subjective that we can see it. But some really skilled writers are much more subtly biased and subjective, but they're still biased and subjective. Is it possible to write a story that is completely non-fiction, that has absolutely no embellishments at all, that is completely nothing but the truth? And I would say that is pretty much impossible, and if you did manage it, it would just be a list of facts. Whenever we convey an event in our own lives, or in someone else's life, we always shape it as a story. Everything we do, say, our memories, everything is shaped by story, by language. Language naturally comes out in stories. We tell episodes. We say, oh, I went out last weekend. The story begins. We, we then shape the story from our own point of view. Every story has a point of view. Every story has bias. Every story has language picked that gives a certain impression. A long time ago, <laughs> Pernifer suggested reading this book um, for a book club, and I did read it at the time, I read it, and I made some notes on things that I might want to talk about, about the book, and I never got round to doing um, the actual video. Um, but one thing that, as I was reading it, that did come to mind, again, was my issue about non-fiction and fiction, and is there a difference, and is one more true than the other? I thought this, in many ways, um, highlighted the fact to me, that although it's a book that is supposed to be non-fiction, there's like an autobiography, it keeps trying to give the impression in some ways that it is not fiction, but in other ways it draws our attention to the fact that every, every life story is in some way fiction, every life story is a story. The book is, is uh, presented in acts. Um, there's a, a quote here which I just opened to look at where it says If I follow the path of memory back to its start, I begin life looking out of my upstairs bedroom window. It's here I have my best daydreams and where I can make up stories I like to think about. 
In my mind's first flash of light, I am here, on the inside looking out of the Pickett's two-storey house on a street on the edge of Glenville. He's kind of describing his memories like flashes of stories. And I think he's kind of drawing attention to that. How much do we shape the stories of our own lives and how much do we shape the stories of other people's lives when we read them, see them, observe them? Our whole reality is built by stories, our thoughts are stories. We create our own stories and in a way we create our own reality. We tell our stories every day, we hear stories every day and every story has an author and every author has a point of view, an agenda, a reason for telling their story. And once that author has put their story together and presented it with the best language they can use to shape the story the way, the way they want it to come across, it then is met by an audience, a reader, a listener. And here's where we get to Roland Barthes or Roland Barthes or something. I can't remember how to pronounce his name. All I really remember about him was he wrote a famous essay called The Death of the Author. And if my memory serves me correctly, that's about the idea of the author kind of gives birth to a book. Okay, you, you gives birth to a book or a story. And I'm talking about author in the greatest generalist sense of the word now. I'm saying the author of any story, the author of any memory, recount, communication, the author of that story gives birth to that story. But then the reader, the audience gets this story or this communication and they might have many common um, symbolisms and, and signifiers with the author. They might come from the same culture, they might use the same language. In many ways they might have a lot of, of, of um, matching uh, signs and stuff. <laughs> but they're not exactly the same. So every reader, every listener hears a story in their own unique way. They highlight in, in what they hear different things will stand out they will then take those things and they bring their own experiences and their own thoughts and their own reality to that story. And then when they absorb that story, they're adding all their own issues and all their own understandings and experiences and signifiers to that story on top of what the author gave. And the story takes on a new life. The author no longer is the controller of that story. Hun's story from one person can take on as many slightly different meanings as there are listeners. So what is true? What is the true meaning? What is the truth in the story? And this goes for everything. This goes for so-called non-fiction just as much as it goes for fiction. If we're looking at non-fiction and the truth in that, it can be fairly one-dimensional. That doesn't really tell us much about human beings. The largest percentage of what makes us human beings, what makes us what we count as us, is what's going on inside here, and what's going on inside our feelings. And they are very subjective things. The biggest truth that I find and I'm interested in is the truth of the human mind, the truth of human nature, the truth of how people behave, the things that go through their minds how they shape their stories. And so the truths that I find in a lot of the fiction I read are multi-dimensional truths. And so I would say, yes, there certainly is a lot of truth in fiction, and in many ways more truth in fiction than there is in non-fiction, because it is a more realistic, multi-dimensional version of truth, which is how human beings create their actual reality. We are not merely physical beings. A lot of our reality is based on the stories we shape, the reality we shape with our stories.